Oh, hello there. I'm Craig Richardson, and welcome to The Theaterist. In this episode of The Theaterist, our theaterist, The Theaterist, will be visiting TheaterWorks' production of Boeing Boeing, a French farce where some stewardesses are caught up in a love quadrangle with some kind of architect in Paris, France. The Theaterist? Thank you for inviting me to be on the program. As the theaterist, it means so much to me to anonymously appear on a program which shares its title with my professional pseudonym. Some of our viewers may be wondering why my identity is disguised by this pixelated visage and roboticized voice. The reason, dear viewers, is because I am a world-renowned celebrity and do not wish for your preconceptions to interfere with my forthcoming scholarly analysis of the theater works production of Boeing Boeing by Mark Camelletti. There, enough of that business. Let us polish the wood that lies gripped in our hungry hands, shall we? I shall first divulge a bit of a secret. You see, the playwright is billed as Mark Camelletti, but I have learned that the director of the theater works production, David McClendon, is not presenting the play in the original French. He is utilizing a translation by Beverly Cross, a British writer of the stage and screen. For the benefit of the American illiterati, I am duty-bound to state, for the record, that this Beverly crosses a man Beverly, not a lady Beverly. See? He has got a beard and everything. It's not that unusual for English gentlemen to be bestowed names, that uneducated Americans wrongly preconceive the associated sex of said name as female. Speaking of bride's head revisited, let's get back to Mark Camelletti before it's too late. Let's see. Not a whole hell of a lot to say about Camelletti, really. I guess the main thing is that he bears a creepy resemblance to the repellent reptile of the theater, Andrew Lloyd Webber. You have got to admit that it is a rather uncanny resemblance. God help us. Each and every one. But enough of that rubbish. Back to Boeing Boeing. You see, the name of the play instantly conveys the notion that a central theme of the play will be the relationship between air travel and the frenetic pace of life ushered in by the jet age, like a sprung spring or a soiled towel. Boing boing. The play was written in 1960, at the height of the gloriously optimistic and luxurious jet age. Camelletti's play, in French, does a better job of eliciting the feeling that this play itself is a zipper between two divided realms of time. Amid the dialogue and stage directions we witness the naive sweetness of progress unzipping itself into the mechanized soullessness of a hastened thirst, born of ingenuity and stalked by the numbness of apathy. It is a hallmark of French faster apps such existential nightmares up in an absurd, wet nap of brain pillows and Jerry Lewis hijinks. It'd be disgusting if it wasn't so deliciously dark and invitingly impenetrable. We had an opportunity to visit with the director of the play, Mr. David McClendon. Let us take a moment and hear a little more about the play, which I am certain Andrew Lloyd Webber is about to relaunch as a musical any minute now. Sorry, David McClendon. It's, it's the idea of the probable or the highly improbable becoming probable. So it's, it's always about misdirection and a lot of doors and uh, but basically the plot is trying to to get across things that won't real shouldn't happen but do um, so that's that's very much a part of this play and the classical french far sense of fado um, is that that there is this guy who lives in paris who's an architect who has uh, living a life of polygamy with three fiancés all of which are steward i at the same time, Gabriella will be on her way to Caracas, and Gloria will be in San Francisco. You see the beauty of it? Perpetual motion. Pure mathematics. Everything designed, organized, and regulated, and working to the precise second. See, the Earth revolves on its axis. My fiancés wheel above the Earth. One this way, one that, one towards the sun, one towards the moon. And eventually, they all, in turn, come home to me. Because they're going to transfer me to a new aircraft. Really? <laughs> Brand new. The Super Boeing. Oh, it's just fantastic. It's got delta wings, 
four Rolls Royce turbo jets. And did you know, darling, that each jet had a thrust of 19,000 pounds? Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> that's interesting, <laughs> especially for us. Now, darling, I know that you take your work very seriously, but I can't see what a thrust of 19,000 pounds has to do with me. Well, it'll make the journey so much faster, darling. So I'll be here more often. So we can spend more time together. I see. <laughs> it gets faster. <laughs> darling! See what I mean? Gabriella, darling! <laughs> oh, darling, an old friend, Robert Caston. Oh, Chuck. Uh, from America. Uh, Again, you have to remember this is the early 60s, where uh, tailored clothes and jazz and booze and sex and, and uh, airplane travel were all very glamorous and, and part of that, what people aspired to. Oh, you can't realize how marvelous it is to be back. It seems ages since I've seen him. So I think of him all the time, in Melbourne and Ankara and Colombo. I'm always dreaming of our little flat and my little Bernard sitting here all alone, thinking of me. It's beautiful. And when we're up about 19... Boeing, Boeing leaves one with the sense of what oh, Martin Heidegger yeah. must have felt whence upon the motivation to write. Being and time was thrust upon him. On the one hand, there's the being we're all so unfamiliar with, and then, of course, there's the time. All of the time. What will we ever do with the time of it all? Well, that's quite something, the theaterist. Thank you for what you do. And thank you for what you do. Whatever it is. I'm Craig Richardson, and that's the theaterist. Fly with me, let's float down to Peru. In Lama Land, there's a one man band, and he'll toot his flute for you. Fly with me, let's take off in the blue.